Hello YouTube, this is Daniel and welcome to yet another Altair clone video. This video is going to be demonstrating a little bit more into CPM. And since I've made any videos about the Altair, or since I've made that last video, I think I had version 1.5 of the Altair clones firmware. I have now up to version 1.8, I've updated it. I've went past through um, version 1.6 that included like bug fixes in the firmware. 1.7 was considered a major update because my, uh, um, it introduced it, um, mini disc support, five and a quarter inch discs, up to 300. Uh, up, I don't know what the size is really, but I'm sure someone will correct me on that. If I'm pretty sure, I, I think it's like. 30k or something I'm really not sure but of course you guys can correct me if you'd like well anyway um and I have version 1.8 which is one of probably right now the my favorite version because uh, Mike Douglas introduced the um, turnkey uh, um, turnkey emulation in this computer and basically what that is is it was a feature that was only included on the Altair 8800 BT which was the I think the revision B with the turnkey and basically what it was is it was a computer that had no switches whatsoever I think it had only a run and stop an off switch and on switch and just a turnkey so basically how you'd enter code was through the actually the terminal um, there was a program you would use with it that allowed you to do that. Um, before version 1.8, you could do something similar. Mike Douglas did supply the uh, turnkey program that allowed you to enter the code through the terminal instead of the front panel switches. There was a video about that. I'm not really sure. Again, I'm really not sure about what video that was. But anyway, there was a program that allowed you to do that instead of doing this front panel switches, which I think would have kind of been easier because it takes a little bit a little while to enter it all in in the front panel anyway so I can understand why people would want to do it through that uh, turnkey program anyway but anyway what the turnkey program does is or the turnkey hardware what's actually emulating a turnkey uh, machine or what when you want to call it well anyway the um, Turnkey, um, what it does is when you switch the computer on, it would automatically load a certain code that you um, have preset it in the memory uh, or in the prom already. So basically, if you have like the 8K basic bootstrap loader in the prom and in one of the uh, prom slots, basically what you would do is you would enable that. And then you go to the admin settings, and then go to turnkey, and then you would uh, um, there is there would be a field that would ask you um, if you want to enable it or disable it, and another field asking where do you want the code to start or uh, where do you want the uh, turnkey thing to start at. And um, I think the AK Bootstrap Loader, um, uh, AK Basic Bootstrap Loader was uh, all zeros, I think. So when you enable the turnkey thing and, and entered in the um, entered in the code where the AK basic bootstrap loader was located which was address zero um, so basically what you do is once you got all that stuff enabled you just turn the computer on and it would immediately go straight to the AK bootstrap loader so basically it's like a normal computer like one of these kind of computers uh, where basically it can automatically boot on its own that's basically what this version 1.8 is. It allows the Altair to boot on its own. And of course, there are, have been some many bug fixes in the firmware. Um, not going to go into much detail with that. But I don't know if I've done it already. I think I did. I believe that I have the disk bootloader for CPM 2.2 already built into the computer. So if I switch this on, it'll automatically boot CPM. But of course, we are not going to do that just yet. Here's what we are going to do. I am going to go ahead and open a terminal because I don't have one open at the moment. So I got a, I have a special key combination. I don't know if it was presetted, but anyway, Control T opens the terminal up. I'm going to go into, so I want to go to terminal. Set change profile to Altair mode. Basically, it just makes it green text. It makes this text bigger. 
and it's just different. And then when I go into full screen, it feels like I'm using an old computer. I don't know why. So now I just lost the program. So I just go sudo mini com port tt or I'm sorry dev slash tty s zero. So basically, what I'm about to type in is it'll launch mini com under the super user using port dev forward a uh, forward slash dev forward slash ttys zero which is the serial which is the com port on my computer i am using my computer that i built recently it's my uh, linux computer this is this his name uh, this computer is named a floater 288 on the network there is um two ports plugged down back here we have this is the altair's um com port now and this is a printer I have right here. I recently acquired this temporarily. This is a Hewlett Packard DeskJet 932C. And it does color, which is nice. Right now it is off. Um, I tried color printing with this. I don't know if the ink is running low, but it does not do very well with color. Um, it did print out text, and it does pretty well with text, so I might use this for essays if my school will let me do essays anyway. But anyway because more and more schools are getting with uh, computers on the internet and like uploading your documents on the internet I haven't done a printed essay for a long time so well yeah well, who knows by the time my uh, uh, by the time if I have a kid or whatever how that happens he'll probably be only using computers so probably printers may become of extinct or what you were discontinued in the future or whatever well anyway but I digress so I'll just hit enter and it'll ask me for my password while I input that right now and we have launched minicom I have the baud number set to 308 n1 the reason why I did that instead of 960 baud 9600 baud excuse me Anyway, I didn't, the reason why I did not set it to that number is because I have this computer's baud rate set to 300 on its main port. I have no idea why, but I like emulating an old computer. I don't know. It is weird. But unfortunately, when I want to get into the configuration, I have to switch the, the, um, um, the terminal into 9600 mode. Uh, baud mode because um, unfortunately switching the um, main uh, terminal in I in uh, the IO main terminal port switching that to 300 baud does not switch the actual uh, uh, configuration monitor to 300 baud so it still runs at 9600 baud it is kind of a pain to change it but hopefully I won't be getting into that a lot of the times and hopefully this won't be the case so now I'm going to go ahead and turn this computer on and it should immediately start booting uh, uh, it should immediately run the multi the boot disk bootloader and then go right into CPM so there you go it's loading look on the screen we have a broken character it looks like that that might be the case it is probably set at 300 whatchamacallit baud or yeah baud it's probably not set at 300 baud and I'm assuming it's set to 9,600 baud. So I'm going to go ahead and do Control A Z, and I'm going to go ahead and configure Minicom. I'm going to set the serial port to 9600, because I'm pretty sure it's set to that, and I don't really feel like fixing it. Alrighty, so if I just shut the computer off and reboot it. There we go. So there is 56k CPM, version 2.2 by MITS. This computer has 64 kilobytes of RAM, but I, for some whatever reason, did not think that putting uh, 63k CPM would uh, fit. I don't know why, but, well, anyway, I can do it, and I've seen Mike Douglas do it on his computer. Mike Douglas is the guy who created this computer, or created the clone computer. But anyway we will go ahead and look around so as you can see the turnkey program has already been enabled and it is set to boot the disk bootloader at address 00FF I think and what's nice is before this update how I would um, used to load the OS is this is how I used to load the OS so 
just simulating so basically pretend okay so I stopped the operating system right now I cleared the memory so it is completely off if I did stop up reset it'll reboot the OS okay I guess they did not do that in my address 8 lights uh, having some issues Let's see if I fixed it yep alrighty anyway so this is how I would used to do it so pretend that the computer I just turned it on already so basically how I would load it was I would do address 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, and I hit examine, and that's where the boot strap disk bootloader code for the just look at that LED. Sad, very eh. So um yeah. I could put a multi bootloader in here, multi disk bootloader, which will allow me to load AK's basic and maybe CPM if I wanted to but this is how I used to do it I'd flip up all the switches hit examine flip them all down flip up 12 and 8 and then I'd hit run and then it would load the operating system that was my old way of doing it but now since uh, technology and the Altair clone is getting better with every new update all I do is just flip the switch on turnkey monitor the turnkey uh, emulator kicks right in and immediately boots CPM so I'm just going to show you guys right now at booting. And bam. Alrighty. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and tour the operating system for a little bit. And I forgot this is not Linux. And that is not a program in Linux, so never mind about that. Anyway, I did have WordStar on here at one point. I deleted it because WordStar works with a certain amount, with certain terminals. It can work with Hyperterm, uh, Microsoft's terminal program. Um, it emulates, I think it works best with the VT52, which I think WordStar does very well in. When I run WordStar in this uh, terminal, which emulates a VT102, it completely screws up the characters. And I'm going to go ahead and show you guys that right now. And so I'm in the C drive, which is basically my pretend C drive. It's basically. I, I'm not using the uh, mini disk feature. I'm still using the eight inch disk feature because I that one holds more data and is a lot a little bit faster. So I have Zork on here, one of my favorite text based games. I have my Pythagorean theorem calculator, um, and I have Wordmaster and Wordstar. So here's what happens when you load Wordstar on a VT102 emulated terminal. So Wordstar, I'm just gonna do test dot text this is a file that I created earlier to test WordStar out in hyperterm and I think WordStar does pretty well and I would use it if it would work so it's loading the operating uh, program you can see the computer is thinking and see it comes out normal but then when it starts printing the menu out that's when it gets all screwed up See, that's it. All the characters get all shifted and whatnot. And then it comes at a point where it can't even print the characters out at all because that's actually where what that would look like. It's basically just the monkey's um, theme, and um, it would get all screwed up. And it, it is kind of sad because I don't like booting into Windows XP just so I could use WordStar. But I do believe there is a fix for this, and there's like you can program your own like um, terminal to be used with this um, WordStar program in the configuration. You can fix it. Um, I don't feel like doing that. Maybe in the future I might. So I and I don't know how to get out of this, and it is just shouting at me random garbage, and I don't know why. So. How did I get out of this earlier? I think it's press and hold control C like crazy man. If that doesn't work, then I'm just going to have to uh, mm, 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 stop that and then reset it and reboot it, which gives me back into the OS. All right, so C, colon. So basically, there's not really a lot to show. This is the last thing I'm going to show until I'm done. Um, I'm just going to show Zork. Zork 1. 
This was a very popular um, text-based game. This is basically a cheaper version of what you would say 2D video gaming in the 1980s. But other than that, it's a very cool game. So, for example, if you hit N, you go north, and you're now in the north of the house. There are windows boarded up and whatnot. And then you just go west to the west of the house. East is where the game pretty much starts. I'm sorry, south is the game where it starts. Yes, that's it. All right, so basically, there is no door here, all window. Okay, you know what? I am... What did I have not tried? Hmm. There was like a, a a window. I don't see that. There is no door here. Oh, there we go. This is east. So in a corner of the house, there's a small window which is slightly ajar. Open window. I don't have to have it capitalized, I don't think. See, it'll open. So the window open. Now I say, go into window. I don't know if it'll recognize that. Oh, I guess it did. Well, so it's telling me what's there is a quantity of water in a glass bottle. So, um, if you have the Altair clone, or if you have an Altair in general and want to play this game, you need CPM, and if you don't know where to find this program, you can go to Mike Douglas's website, AltairClone.com. If you go to the support link, there is a download for, um, I don't really remember how I was able to download it. Let me uh, get out of here. F11. So, if I understand correctly, it's AltairClone.com. And then I just you go to support, and then you go to, I think there's a download for it, I don't know, CPM for the Altair, and so, okay, so here, let me just re-show you guys that. So you go to, to the Altair clone website, hit support, and then you go to a link that says CPM for the Altair, and it has CPM 2.2 .2 and 1.4. And if you go into this folder, go into two, CPM 2.2, 2, and there, I, there's the operating system I could have used, CPM 63K. But right there at the bottom is Zork in a compressed disk file. Basically, what you have to do is, if you were running Windows, which is the, um, you just transfer the file using X or Z mo as an X modem or something. And just transfer the file to X modem through the configuration monitor in the floppy disk menu. So you just transfer that and then just copy game off of it. Make sure you, well, okay, you can just keep the game on the virtual disk anyway. So basically that is my overview of the new update of the Altair 8800 clone version 1.8 firmware and how it can pretty much automatically boot on itself. Basically, it's like a normal computer kind of now. So thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Oh, there's a revision B of CPM. Well, okay, I'm getting off topic. Anyway, I should try that. So thank you for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one, and perhaps it might be another video about this computer. We'll see. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. And leave a comment below if you have one. And bye.